Between Y2K, the end of the Mayan calendar, and even the 2015 blood moon prophecy, most of us would just shake our heads at the idea of the end of the world, and it's not hard to see why. All you need is a quick Google search on the end of the world and you'll bring up hundreds of dates, past and present, when the planet was supposed to have gone belly up. Quite frankly, mankind has predicted its end so many times. At this point, it's beyond laughable. But in today's video, we won't be telling you about some cockamamie psychic prediction. We'll be talking about cold, hard truths. From a command order mix-up to chunks of space rock crashing down on Earth. Get ready for four times the world almost ended for real. Our first story begins just after midnight on October 28th in 1962. Airman John Bordney of the United States Air Force was just beginning the shift that nearly ended the world. He was stationed at one of the four connected secret U.S. military bases in Okinawa and the Cold War was in full swing. It was a few hours into the shift when the captain on duty, Captain William Bassett, received a coded order, telling the base and its surrounding partners to unload their entire inventory of nuclear warheads at several strategic communist cities. There was just one problem. They were only at DEFCON 2. Missiles cannot be launched at this level of readiness, and the order didn't include instructions to move up to DEFCON 1. To make things even muddier, the designated targets included more than one city that wasn't even in Russia. The men were confused about why they were being told to target people who weren't even enemies of the United States. Captain William acted quickly, ordering his and the other bases to hold off their launch. When a lieutenant tried to disobey that order, William instructed in no uncertain terms that the man was to be shot if he tried to launch missiles without direct verbal clearance from a superior officer or clear orders for the bases to move up to DEFCON 1. Then he called his superiors and actually lied to them. He told them the order had been garbled on its way to them and was received incompletely. It wasn't a complete lie, of course. Without the instructions to move up to DEFCON 1, the first part of the order couldn't be carried out. The message came through again. Nothing had changed. At that point, Captain William called them back and told them to either upgrade to DEFCON 1 or cancel the order to fire their missiles. Then and only then did the Major who sent the original message actually read what he typed. The order was cancelled immediately and all responsible parties were demoted. Had it not been for Captain William's good sense and prompt response, you likely wouldn't be sitting there enjoying this video today. Sadly, this incident was declassified four years too late. William Bassett had already passed on. But if the first mix-up wasn't a near enough miss for your tastes, our next story is about a close call of the underwater variety. It was 1962, October 27th, a day that will forever be known as Black Saturday. To give you a little background, the Cold War had hit ahead. America had missiles in Turkey and Russia had put its own missiles in Cuba. Each side was poised to destroy the other. All they needed was a single spark to ignite complete and utter annihilation of life on Earth. When America found out about the missiles that Russia had stashed in Cuba, they rushed over several warships and aircraft and threatened to blow Cuba straight out of the water if the aforementioned artillery wasn't removed. They received several warnings to disperse this illegal blockade or face the consequences. Instead of leaving, they decided to drop charges into the water in an attempt to flush out a lurking submarine. That vessel, manned by none other than Soviet sailor Vasily Alexandrovich Arkhipov and his fellow seamen, was carrying a nuclear missile. In order to launch the missile on the American ships and start the end of the world, all three commanding officers on the submarine had to agree on that course of action. With bombs lighting up the water all around them, the first two commanders plugged in their keys and hovered over their respective launch buttons. Vasily was the third. Against what would seem to be the better judgment at the moment, he denied them his consent. His steadfast refusal to launch a weapon of mass destruction is a big part of what helped defuse the situation. Eventually, America agreed to leave and Russia pulled their weapons out of Cuba. America responded by removing its missiles from Turkey. Just when all-out war seemed inevitable, one man's choice started a chain reaction that eased tensions on both sides of the fence and, arguably, was a major step towards the eventual end of the Cold War. 
three decades later. The scariest part about these events is that two of them happened within just a day of each other. When one instance failed to end the world, it was almost like some force of darkness needed to make it happen. So the next day, the radio screw-up nearly made Vasily's courage worthless. We're not normally the type to believe in conspiracy theories, but the evidence that something was going on behind the scenes in those days is pretty convincing. How else do you explain two near misses so close together and one that seemed to be all but intentional? It's pretty crazy stuff. Our next story is another Cold War case of technological malfunction. In this instance, it wasn't as much a human error as it was a trick of Mother Nature. On September 25, 1983, alarm bells started going off in the USSR. Their nuclear early warning system detected several ballistic missiles launched from bases across the US. Now ordinarily, when someone is shooting at you, your reaction is to shoot back. Indeed, the base was a flurry of activity. Preparing nuclear warheads and grabbing keys in a mad dash to stop the incoming attack before the destruction of several Soviet cities. But something about the telemetry didn't make sense. According to what it was showing, the U.S. had only sent five missiles. Of course, five nuclear bombs can do a lot of damage, but it certainly wasn't enough to destroy all the strategic facilities of the Soviet Union. Not even close. One man found himself asking why America would send out such a pitiful attack. The answer is simple, they didn't. Keeping a level head, the officer named Stanislav Petrov went against the orders of his superiors when he reported out that the attack was a false alarm. And because of his report, the counterattack was stopped in its tracks. At first, everyone thought he was crazy. But when nothing exploded, it became clear that he'd been right all along. And indeed, later investigation into the satellite's systems proved that the data was nothing more than sunlight reflecting off of high-altitude clouds. If Petrov hadn't been there, the sun and a bit of water vapor would have started an all-out nuclear war. Petrov was promised a reward for the quick response that prevented the certain destruction of not only mankind, but all life on Earth. Instead, he was reprimanded for filing paperwork incorrectly and his superior officers, embarrassed by their technology's mistakes, buried the evidence. The incident remained under wraps for over a decade, but unlike Captain William, Petrov was alive when it was finally time for him to be praised. He was awarded a sum of 25,000 euros and received the Dresden Prize for conflict prevention. Sadly, he passed away in May of 2017 at the ripe age of 77. For the first three stories of our video, it was mankind that came within inches of ending all life on this planet, and that makes sense. We often joke that we'll be the ones to blow ourselves up. But our next story, however, is a bit more out of this world. On June 30th, 1908, the Tunguska meteorite fell into Earth's atmosphere and exploded high above the ground. The resulting shockwave flattened 8 million trees in an instant. The shock would have registered as a 5.0 on the Richter scale and could have decimated an actual city. As it was, it took out 2,000 square kilometers of dense Russian forests. For those on the Imperial system, that's a little over 800 square miles, and it didn't even land. In fact, no one even saw what happened. We don't actually know how the fragment exploded so high up, but the force of it has been estimated to be somewhere around 15 megatons. That's more than 1,000 times the force of a nuclear attack on Hiroshima, around a third as powerful as the strongest nuclear bomb in the USSR. There was no impact crater, only a five-mile patch of scorched, branchless trees. It wasn't until someone could go on in and investigate over a decade later that a clearer picture began to form. The fragment itself was estimated at only around 200 feet wide, which seems huge compared to man-made bombs. But the more you look into it, the more you realize that it was only a tiny piece of an entire asteroid. In August of 1883, the Mexican astronomer Jose Bonilla took pictures of what he described as 300 large dark shapes crossing in front of the sun. Only later did people realize that these were likely the fragments of a billion ton asteroid that had somehow been blown apart. The scariest part was that they were within a few hundred kilometers of Earth. In space distance, that's nothing. Could the 1908 explosion have been one of those fragments? 
We don't even want to imagine the destruction if that massive meteor had never broken apart. But one thing is certain, life on our planet could end, whether by our hands or the fingers of fate. We hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know which one of these stories really impressed you the most. Do you know about other times the world almost ended? And when do you think the world will end? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. So you'll be the first to know when we post a new video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.